What's public achievement? You don't know. Working, working together, together to change our world. What? Working together to change our world. What? Working together to change our world. What? Working together. That's PA. Now, in public achievement, there are core concepts. Help you keep it together, step by step. Don't need no teachers running up to me. Today we will start with one, two, three. Like freedom! Yeah, freedom! Like freedom! Tell me freedom. We are free to live under the law. Society and the world is made for ourselves. We are free to live under the law. Society and the world is made for ourselves. We are Well, the idea for public achievement came from my experience as a, as a college student. I was working in the civil rights movement um, for something called the Citizenship Education Program. And it was basically citizenship classes across the South. Ordinary people would organize after being in a training center for a week in Dorchester, McIntosh, Georgia. They'd go back and they'd create citizenship schools and they would learn how to do basic organizing. And the key thing that we saw all the time was that people who felt victimized and powerless developed a different identity. They became agents of change. They believed they could make a difference. They believed nobody was going to fix things for them. The song that Public Achievement uses, that we are the ones we've been waiting for, captures that. Um, so it was quite inspiring. Um, I saw kids who really were having terrible trouble with school, kids who were younger than I was. Uh, I, would or I was organizing citizenship schools across the South. I saw them change. So um, when I began at the Humphrey Institute in 1987, taking ideas from the best community organizing in translate them, in figuring out how to translate them into other settings, into schools and a nursing home and a college and St. Catherine, um, we wanted to do something that was parallel to the citizenship schools, but we wanted it to be aimed at young people. So we had, um, in 1990, we made a partnership with the new mayor of St. Paul, Jim Scheibel, and we co-sponsored forums across the city of St. Paul, about uh, 20 or so, with teenagers of all different backgrounds, asking them, are there problems you worry about? And everyone had a long list. And then asking, um, what do you think you can do about those? And the kids said, uh, Nobody's asked us that question. They'd never been asked what they could do about problems. They'd been sometimes in the more honors type classes had been asked what should be done about a problem, but that's a very different question. That comes to what government programs should fix it. Or so they were animated. They said we've never been asked. We don't. We don't know how to. We never taken a course on how to take action, um, solve public problems. So we developed public achievement out of that, um, and. We soon discovered that um, it takes learning for kids to learn how to make change. So the, I was talking in the class this morning. The first experience we had was a high school that took out public achievement. The kids walked out on a hat strike because they couldn't wear hats. Uh, the principal had a press conference called a press conference and said, we're not going to allow hats because they're gang colors. So the kids... Strike collapsed. I asked them what they learned. They said they learned 
You can't make change. It's even worse than we thought. So after that first experience, we wanted to develop uh, deeper ways for kids to learn to make change that were more effective, that understood so kids would learn, learn to understand the culture of the place they were working and the different interests, the po politics of a school or a community. So that was key. Um, and we've seen it as really developing the power of young people for constructive change. That's how I would describe it. And now the connection with Fridley is that in a, in a world in which people are more and more feel hemmed in and constrained and like uh, scoop power is being taken away from schools with standardized testing and uh, colleges are under the gun for not directly responding to workforce needs and um, translational science is saying um, you know people need to be told exactly how to overcome obesity problems and I mean there are more and more ways people feel constrained and controlled from the outside. Public achievement um, in general is a, an oasis of freedom that we see is spreading out and Fridley is powerful because it's like a 21st century example of fighting the new segregation fighting the new um, system of control that uh, is really vivid. And I think these kids who were so stigmatized and so um, hemmed in and uh, usually treated as problems um, in Fridley, they're really developing a space for freedom and for agency and for power. So it's like a story that everybody, that many, many people can relate to. Susan O'Connor approached us with a... Uh an opportunity to participate in this model and it was a pilot program it was a three-year pilot program where she was going to use public achievement to try and uh, improve the abilities of our special needs students in becoming more empowered and to change the things around them and that's uh, really one of the things that I believe is in when you give students an opportunity to speak for themselves and design their own learning plan uh, they generally are more engaged for longer periods of time. So I was all for it. Yeah, for us, I mean, like we just talked about the struggles that our kids have in a typical school setting, a typical school model. So the idea of trying something different that might work and might connect and might give school a purpose for them is, is definitely worth a shot. Fridley came about uh, through um, partnership with Augsburg's Department of Education, uh, Special Education Department faculty, who wanted to really look at changing how special education is done in K-12 uh, schools. So um, when we moved from the Humphrey to Augsburg, I began working with Susan O'Connor, who is the chair of, of the department, and helped her understand how public achievement could be a vehicle for this change that she was very interested in, in working on. So um, using the strategies in which we do wherever we go, basically began building relationships with the teachers at Fridley, uh, the principal, helping uh, Susan and the other faculty at Augsburg learn about it, and then we uh, met with the young people at uh, Fridley Middle School and in this particular case, they're all a level three EBD young people, which mm -hmm. means they're motion behavior um, disabled. Mm -hmm. um, and really, the first year uh, it began to take shape, uh, really was a powerful tool to not only help the young people do this work and do school differently, but also to help the uh, future special ed teachers who were coaches. So that, that's another part. It's a teacher professional development tool as well, which isn't always the case in, in uh, some places in the country it is, but that, that also makes a spe uh, special the, the work at Fridley that it is about not only the young people doing public work, but it's also about the coaches who are going to be future teachers adding a different skill set and knowledge and experience to their future uh, teacher tool belt. Special education is really set up, it's a medical model still. We're still 
looking at how to fix kids. And I think that shifting, any kind of shifting of models like that, takes a lot of time and a lot of effort. So my my hope is that we can, you know, show that this is something that's been beneficial to the students with the disabilities and to the teachers coming out, and that as our teachers, um, you know, continue to leave and to get jobs after they've had this experience, and then we send our next set of teachers out to them. We build this network that kind of shifts, and it might be small, just in our little area at first, but um, I think that shift and that modeling of that has to come. So, you know, one of the things I've learned is um, a concept called citizen alum, which our alums, when they graduate and they're trained in this and go and hopefully practice public achievement in their classrooms, then they bring the next set through and we develop, kind of we spread out and develop a network for this. And so I'm hoping that is something that, um, you know, people see broader than just here in Minnesota. I, I hope, first of all, we see it in Minnesota, and secondly, then it can be seen a little broader. Can you just uh, give me a general idea of how the class is run for Public Achievement Hour? Like, what happens, and what does that look like that may be different from a regular class? Uh, students, they'll sign up for a role, uh, such as a facilitator, or a recorder, or a timekeeper, or an encourager, and uh, with we do it a little bit differently. Mm -hmm. Sometimes there are kids that really like a, a particular role and they'll stick with it. And others want to rotate through. And I think it's good that they experience all of them and then maybe land on what works best for them on this particular project. So they sign up and then uh, with me working with the teacher uh, will outline what the agenda is for the day and the facilitator will try and facilitate that. So if there are, uh, for example, there there's always seems to be more than one thing to do. So a facilitator might say, okay, we're going to work on this presentation today and we're going to try and brainstorm over here about this obstacle that we have. And uh, the facilitator will try and get people to sign up for one and the other. And then maybe I will work with one group and the facilitator will work with another towards uh, reaching their goals for the day. The great thing about it is that you know, they get to plan it. It's it's student voice, and they get to decide. And one of the great things about it is that when when things do break down, sometimes we have communication breakdowns, and we stop and we say, "Hey, this is public achievement. This is what do we do when we have communication breakdowns?" And and having practiced those things through trying to move our project forward, they can they can do it. And when we do have those breakdowns, they also can say, yeah, they can, they can own up to their part in it, which is mm -hmm. something that's very difficult for our mm -hmm. kids. We have, with our, the group that I work with, one of the two groups that I work with, Bully Bosses, we're, we're two years in and we have a lot of carryover for kids who are, were here for both years. So they kind of come in and we, we the kids are pretty good at general idea of what we're working on, so a lot of times We'll, put it, we'll brainstorm a list, what needs to get done, and that's the first part of the day. Here's, here's the six things that we need to get done, and then what are you doing? What do you want to work on? And we go through and assign rules, and then everybody gets to work. But again, to get to that point, that's two years of working on this project, and everybody kind of has a good idea, and they, they have an understanding of each other's roles and strengths within the group. So if there's something that needs to be designed on the computer, they know which student has a strength in that area. Oh, yeah he should probably do that, or we need to write a script for this, okay, well, we, we should probably work on that, or there's something more arts and art-oriented, and it's funny because they've all learned after this time of working together, they they operate, you know, when, when, when they're effective, when they're on, it's like a small business. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's how they operate. They, they know the strengths, they know what needs to get done, and they're working towards that, that goal, and everybody kind of has their role within it, and with Bully Bosses, it's not, it's not so assigned with them because they're so in the flow of it and have been working together for long enough that they've kind of, they're more natural roles as opposed to assigning the okay. specific. So how would you describe the role that the teacher plays in this process? I My role is to just, you know, when, when we have the struggles and when they are having a tough time is to kind of call that time out and say, how are we going to solve this? Not to not to fix it for them, but to point out, hey, we're we're losing sight of what the goal is here and is this something you guys are remind them of why they started the project? Is this something you guys really want to do? Because this is your project. This is your class. This is your your ideas, your mission. So if this is really what we want to do, how are we going to do it? 
and kind of pull them back. And at the same time, they are middle schoolers and they do have all these needs and the idea of being on task, you know, and, and saying, okay, we've completely gone off track today and you guys are having a good conversation over there, but is that helping us get this done? And just really just to remind them to guide them um, is, is the biggest piece of it. Not to not to tell them what to do, but to, to kind of guide them along on the mission that they've set for themselves. They've got an agenda with goals and sometimes they just get stuck. And so I will interject with a question and that will help move along a little bit. All the other classes I got there, like, the teachers, like, teach the students and, like, tell them what to do and what's your assignment and, like, or whatever. But in, like, public achievement, the teachers say, okay, what do you want to do? Start off at the beginning of the year, we introduce the idea of public achievement. They pick a topic that they're interested in, something, a problem, an issue that they see in their world, in their community that they would like to do something about. So they can work on that on their own or they can work with a partner or two or three kids is usually the, the biggest group that we'll have at that point. So they research the, the issue, they come up with some possible ideas for a project, and then they present at the issues convention. So each group or each student will get a chance to, to share their idea, kind of pitch their idea to the classmates, and then we, we take a vote. And in our program, because we have two teachers working with the students, we have, we have two issues each year that, that are focused on and the two issues that we have the most votes at the end of the convention are the ideas that we pick on and then if your idea did, didn't get picked you have two options to choose from and what you want to work on the rest of the year. In the beginning of the year we had a pit bull from Rada Love Plus oh, come, yes. from, come and like into our classroom and like they showed us like tricks like the tricks that he could do and like it was I don't know he was just a therapy dog his mm -hmm. name is Blue he was so cute like he like gave everyone attention I don't know I just thought that was really cool mm -hmm. I like you know those other classes they're not gonna let other like places come in there and like this class like it's different mm -hmm. I like it what what else have you guys worked on with we the had, Pitbull project we had did like buttons and projects we had like went to um Oxford College to um like we had talked about Paul's for College how they are a good family and all that. We had passed out flyers and buttons and all that and a lot of people accepted them at the end of the day when we was done everything was gone. Only candy was like left and all that. And we had a good time and people was like they are looking to that and stuff but yeah. So what kind of messages were on your flyers and your buttons? Um, on our flyers, um, it would just say like pit bulls, like five things, like pit bulls, like I don't know, like I made How one of my flyers, like and like I made it like showing like people like that they don't know like what a pit bull is, like uh -huh. you might not know this. I'm not trying to get like all technical or anything, but a pit, when people say a pit bull, it really just describes three different breeds. Yep, it's not one breed. And I don't know, people just think that they're mean, like they're not mean. I had a pit bull before I and it was a good dog. We're doing a kindness week to the twentieth to the twenty fourth of May. Uh huh. And we're and we're doing like kindness buttons. So we're like if if you see something being kind, we pass it on. We track it out throughout the day because we're going to put numbers on them. Mm -hmm. And they're probably, we're trying to do 10 for each school. Mm -hmm. And we're trying to get, um, trying to get, like, stores to give us, like, what is it? What, is, what are we trying to get from the stores? Oh, we're trying to get prizes. Yeah. Okay. We're passing out flyers. Flyers. You can see the flyers all over in the hallways. So what have you had to do to, to, to get this happen? Have you had to work with other people? Or yes, we got the idea from the elementary schools. Oh, you did? Mm -hmm. Okay. So is there a group of kids at the elementary school yep, helping? They're, we call them the mini, mini bully bosses. The mini bully bosses? Mm -hmm. And I see you have a t-shirt. Mm -hmm. I see t-shirt. So why, why was this an important issue to you? Um, to I think it was an important issue for me, for us, because... 
no, a lot of bullying. Yeah, mm -hmm. and no kids, not a lot of kids want to go to school anymore. It's a lot of people are committing suicide because mm -hmm. we're being bullied so much, like, doing bad stuff to themselves. Twenty thousand, I think. Yeah, some some around that. In our in our in our around in our country, a lot of people are being put in school because of bullying and harming themselves. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and so, what do you hope happens with this kindness week? We want to make sure we want to see if people are going to start being kind after kindness week, because we're tired of people being treated bad, including us, mm -hmm. and we don't like that. Mm -hmm. And we're trying to make people treat each other that we want to be treated. Did you do a survey? Yep. Mm -hmm. And did you, you guys, you guys wrote the survey and handed yep. it out. Yes. And that's where these numbers came from. Yep. Uh -huh. So what skills do you think that this practice helps develop in these kids that they can use both in and outside of school? Well, one is that, that perseverance or, you know, they, many of them already come with resilience, but uh, that idea to keep going, that perseverance, that, that's one definite thing. And it also helps them with their, their ability to work as a member of a team. Uh, they're not used to that. So those are two things that come to mind right away. Yeah, yeah, those two for sure. I would say they're, they're public speaking and kind of the idea of a public persona. Who I am when I'm working with my public achievement group is it's a different pr presentation of myself than it is when I'm hanging out with my buddies after school. There's a, they're, they're professional selves. So we talk about that, that idea and, you know, the, the idea of who you are given a setting. Our mission is to visit children's hospitals, waiting rooms, create art projects with patients and families, and make their day just a little brighter. So in our hospitals, we have like there's like buffins over there, mm -hmm. and they have like Play-Doh and like a whole bunch of like crafts and Arthur like crafts fun and things to do. Like you can make like um, jerseys, um, coloring pictures, refresher bracelets. bracelets, puppets. All different like you like Play-Doh, mm -hmm. like a whole bunch of like duct tape pens, like. A whole bunch of different stuff. A lot like, of people like it. And I don't know, like little kids, I don't know, like they come and like that. We have a whole bunch of fun. I enjoy seeing like the kids' smiles when they're like, because first they're like all scared to go to the therapy. Because mm -hmm. like, like some of them, they get surgery and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But they, if you play, and they're just like, okay, they're so relaxed. Mm -hmm. The other thing I think is that we really, in education, um, we seem to have become really isolated in general, and I feel oftentimes like, um, you know, here's the school and here's the community, and I think this provides an opportunity for really opening the school doors and bringing in that exchange with community and and school. Um, schools aren't isolated things, but they should really be places where community members come in, and that happened a lot through public achievement. We started out trying to f fix a weight room, but then we couldn't do a weight room because we were trying to be motivational heroes in a weight room. But, we're, well, but then we couldn't. And then we got it okay to paint outside of the weight rooms. What do you hope these murals do? To get people motivated. Okay. Mo to work out and to stay active. We got permission from the superintendent, Dr. Flatman. Uh -huh. And Dr. Flatman didn't care, so. So Miss Lifey came over, she said yes, and then Mr. Beatty came over and gave us the projector. Okay. Miss Beck came over and gave us a computer, so we can start on some of the murals. Okay, it sounds like you had to work with a lot of people. Yeah. Mr. So. Beatty, Miss Beck, and Miss Hasbrook. Miss Hasbrook. Uh huh. And Francis. Okay. Did you learn a lot about trying to work with people? Or? Yeah. Yes. Yeah? What, what new experiences did you have that you never had before trying to work with all these people? Because we never really had a good relationship with them because we never had classes with them. But then once we got to do, do stuff with them, then we got a better relationship. They first emailed me and, and pitched the idea. Hey, we're looking to do some murals in the halls to you know, make kids more proud of their school and their walls and take care of them. And so they said, we have the images, 
we are wondering if you could help us come up with a way to get them on the wall easily and then if maybe your art clubs could help us paint. Okay? So um, we, I came on my break and I came over to their classroom and they did a presentation for me of all their work and all it was going to do and it was really fantastic. And so I said, you know, what we can do is we can project them onto the wall, you guys can trace them, and my art clubs can paint them. And what did you think about the way they presented everything and like their work on this? It's very professional. Yeah, it's really well done and thoughtful. They seem really passionate about it. We had to trace it. We could do a pencil line. So we had to trace it for them to paint it because it's too hard to just to just paint all the things. So we could see the outline where we trace it. So, this was the first mural we did. This is the first thing we did. And this is one of our students that are in our class. These are the girls' basketball and the girls' track and field. In those experiences and settings, um, kids just develop more hope and also a sense of themselves and the world as agents of change. It's fun. I like to get along with everybody. Mm -hmm. We all have fun. I teach like it takes she take pictures and like of like what we do, like what we go out, like um, like field trips. We do a lot of fun stuff. Like we be having fun. Like at the end of the day, we'll talk about it. We keep talking about it and all that. But I like public achievement. It was fun to help the homeless when we first started public achievement in this. School. Well, that was not here then. I started yeah, thinking about coming to here. Okay. And and I really liked it because it helped help. We we um made blankets and everything, and we went to shelters to see what it's really like, and that really struck me because I used to be homeless and mm -hmm. and I got a second chance to to um regain regain my strength on that stuff. And I want to give everyone else a chance just like that. They've become become more hopeful. They've become more uh, confident. They they have uh, been less disruptive. Uh, the first year, I saw all kinds of uh, behavior that one would think is inappropriate. Everything from swearing to actually fighting. I haven't seen that in the last couple of years. Uh, they like public achievement. They like the fact that they're respected, that the people are coming into the classroom and being with them, care about and care about what they do, and, and, and they're also making a difference because they're doing work to bring about change in their school and outside of their school. Well, I've changed because, like, instead of just getting mad right when people say something I don't like, I kind of just, like, say, okay, okay, like, and I hear out what they have to say, and then I'll be like, well, did like this, and like just talk to them like, well, this is really true. Like you might think like this is true, but no, this is like the facts. Like, so like I changed like be having my attitude. Like, mm -hmm. I think I don't know. It it's done good. I have been changing like at mm -hmm. home, and everything else too. But yeah, I've been changing mostly in school because I used to have rough days and all that, and I've been I have been becoming a better person. Since our students have been working projects through public achievement, they are more outgoing and in the sense of being able to approach adults who have power so that they can share that power. Uh, for example, uh, I don't think that, our, that kids in the Setting 3 program normally approach the principal or the deans or uh, the, the superintendents. It's just not something that's done, but they, they have realized through all the concepts in public achievement that, hey, if we want power, we have to share that power with those who have the power. They have something that we want, and we have an idea that can really help our whole community. So they have learned that, and they don't think twice about sending an email to the, to the superintendent or the principal or walking down and asking the principal, you know, we really need your opinion on this before we get too involved. Do you think that this is possible? And the principal will sit down with them mm -hmm. and explain, you know, here's what I, here's how I see it from my perspective. You have to consider the perspective of the administration and uh, the residents of Fridley. How is this going to affect everybody? So it's, it's real powerful learning 
that you know will help them at home, like I said, but now as they get older, 16, 17, and they start getting jobs, they're going to be so much more prepared, I think, for the real world because of this. Yeah, and when, I mean, talk about their self-confidence and their self-image. Um, these are students who've experienced a lot of failure in school and not, not just failing grades. I mean, failed friendships, failed relationships with teachers, just, just really have struggled. So to have this where they go and schedule meetings with the principal or they go to the school board and present, um, where last year some of the kids were, were interviewed by NPR, and to have these experiences where they're building success, the way they view themselves changes, starts to change for the positive, which is, you know, if, if they're going to move on and be successful in anything, they, they first have to believe that they can, and, and public achievement really helps give them that message that, you do have power. What you say matters. What you think matters, and and you can do something about it, if you, if you're willing to work and to give these kids that message and then show them it and you know have them actually do it and see that it's true, is just it's a hugely powerful thing for them. Do you think public achievement has helped you guys see that you have power? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. How? We can do anything now. We put our mind to. Mm -hmm. Have you have you really thought about that before this class? No. no. Have you felt like that before this class? Sometimes. Sometimes. Have you felt like that in school before this class? Mm -mm. No. I think it has made us a leader. All of us get a to get that chance to be a leader, and we get to get better relationships with our classmates, and we get to work together, a teamwork. I think it's helping. I think it's helping everybody in our class. Mm -hmm. They get to do what they want. They get, it's not an adults who are doing the, it's not adults picking a topic, it's us, we get to choose our own topic. Public achievement is really what school is all about. We want our kids to go and learn those skills that they can then use the rest of their lives. And for so many students, myself included, when I was younger, uh, sitting down with a math textbook and answering problems meant nothing to me. I had a good memory, so I did okay in school, but afterwards there was no value to it. Uh, these guys, when they have to do math, uh, it might have to do with, okay, we have some murals to paint on the wall. Uh, if we're going to if we're going to use a, a picture that's on an eight and a half by eleven sheet of paper and we're going to project it on the wall, how many inches do we need to be thinking for a space? Uh, the, the, the reading and the, the writing skills that they've mm -hmm. had to practice, they've, they can't just write like they're doing a text message or an email, they have to write like a, a professional letter and they've learned those skills. Uh, when, we, when we practice, we role play a little bit if we're going to have a presentation so they have a chance to make those mistakes and give each other feedback. They're learning from each other and they're learning skills that they can use the rest of their lives. It, it's really the best thing that's been working for us for these students with these great needs. It's, it's more of an equalizing thing, and I think um, it's the first thing since I left grad school that I feel in special ed is really hopeful, because oftentimes it's, it's really hard for me to see the change and how we have to push back in the system and the way it's been developed, and this is the first thing that I feel has real potential for hope and change. So many schools feel under the gun and feel relatively powerless, and the Tendencies are to take power not only away from students, but to take power away from educators, teachers, and parents. Uh, public achievement is, um, I would say, several things. First of all, it's a model of how young people can develop a sense of empowerment and skill to act effectively and constructively. Um, we've seen in a lot of cases that when they do that, kids' academic achievements go up. They're more motivated. It seems more real. Um, we've also seen um, teachers who learn from public achievement new methods for teaching that engage students' interests through hands-on projects, um, things that kids want to work on. So education often becomes more relevant, and that's especially true, I would say, for kids who are um, underserved, low-income, minority kids. We've seen uh, teachers themselves... Um, think about their own roles and their own citizen identity. So they, there's, a, there's a challenge implicit in public achievement to become a citizen teacher, not simply a classroom instructor, but how you can 
as a teacher be a change agent in education, how you can make relationships with parents in other parts of the school and think about constructive change. And then finally, um, for schools that really take public achievement on as part of their core mission, it can be an important way to accomplish institutional purposes. And that could be different, like a more diverse student body or handling different uh, cultural or racial conflicts in more constructive ways or <clears throat> connecting with the community in a better way because public achievement often has strong community dimensions. Or, in the broadest level, returning to the founding purposes of education, which have been really eroded, which is educating for citizenship. So what would you guys say if there were other kids at a different school that heard they could maybe do public achievement? What would you tell them about public achievement? It's a good, it's a good thing. And like, had them, like, what we did, like, had a teacher let them be, like, kind of the teacher, but really not the teacher, but, like, had them pick what they want to do, and all vote on it, and whatever, get the most, and stuff, like, they do that project and get good into it, like how we did, like, when our field trip was talking about it, and all, everything, and a lot of people liked it, and so I think we should, I mean, they should do that, too, just so, like, how we did. Okay. I would I would tell somebody about like if they wanted to do that like to involve like inform the teacher about it. I would tell them that it's a very good program like for kids like any age to like do not like kindergarten. <laughs> but like I think it's like it gave me some good experiences that I think that people out like in the mainstream wouldn't have. Mm -hmm. So I think that everyone should. Um, like have a, like know what public achievement is. It's really fun, man. It's um, very. I think they'll like it too. Mm -hmm. It's very fun, and I would like him. I would think they would love it, and I want them to experience what we've been experiencing. And I think we should go, go. Everybody should do it. Too. Yes. Mm -hmm. I think it's for any age. I think it's good from my kindergarten to twelfth grade. Mm -hmm. Or to college, it's a really good, it's a really good for us. It's not only teaching us good stuff, teaching us everything. Mm -hmm. It's teaching us about our community, because um, we had some people from Ukraine come, from Ukraine to come, and we shared um, what we shared what um, public treatment was to them, and they, I think they liked it too. But it's messy, and so if you're looking for something that's that's that you need to have control over. Public achievement is probably not for you. But if you're willing to let loose of those reins and give the kids the power to, you know, maybe raise their voices in, in all kinds of ways and learn to give and take and kind of go along with them on the side, I think you'll find that you're in a better place in the end. It's public achievement. Public achievement.